Hey everybody, welcome to Level Pixel Level. And this is just a quick video where I kind of want to talk about the difference between connected and disconnected bones in Blender and sort of the benefits and drawbacks of both. So I have a very simple rig here with just two bones. And if I expand the hierarchy in the outliner, I have bone two and bone one. So I'm going to flip to edit mode. I'm going to click on bone zero two down here and I'm going to shift click on bone zero one. And I'm going to go to armature parent make. Now you have these options here. You have connected and keep offset. Let's start with keep offset. When I do this type of a parenting, nothing changes. Everything stays the same. And to show you how this works, I'm going to flip to pose mode. So now when I rotate bone zero one, bone zero two goes with it. And even if I translate bone zero one, bone zero two goes with it. And bone zero two, this one down here is still pretty free. If I go to the item and the transforms, I can change all of these things. And it's basically just a direct parent uh, connection. It's probably the most simple parent connection you can make between two objects. And it's very similar with two bones. So I'm going to zero this out. And let's go back to edit mode. So I've clicked on bone zero two, and I'm going to shift click on bone zero one again. And I'm going to go to armature, parent, make. And this time I'm going to do a connected bone. So right away, you'll see that the bone actually moves and it changes its location because it is connecting the head of this bone to the tail of this bone. Very quickly, every bone has a head and a tail. This is the head and this is the tail. If you're coming from Maya, this will be a bit weird in that every bone, every joint is a vector, is a line between two points. I'm going to show you something here. I have this, the head of this bone up here. And if I do shift S cursor to selected, and I grab the tail and do shift S selection to cursor, it's gone now. Now it's still right here in my armature. And even though I'm in edit mode, this bone still exists. But if I flip to pose mode and then back to edit mode, it's gone. If you have a bone with a zero vector, it'll actually destroy itself. Just something to keep in mind as you're working ahead. But these bones here, I have this connected bone here to this bone up here and actually moves the tail of the bone to the head of one. I can only click on this and move them as a pair in edit mode, but it gets a little bit more interesting in pose mode. So same thing as uh, the offset. I can still rotate this. I can still move this and I can still scale this. And it follows a pretty simple parent child relation. The difference is if I click bone zero two, I no longer have a location option. I can only rotate this. This is a connected bone and it cannot be translated away in space from its parent. There are ways you can mess with this using constraints, but just for the sake of this video, I probably won't get into that. So where would you want to use this? Well, let's say this was an elbow and you didn't want the animator translating the forearm away from the upper arm. This bone right here would allow you to control the elbow without having them worry about translation. You may not want to do that. You may want to leave this as a disconnected bone and you can do this at any time. If you just go to edit mode, you can click on this bone and come to the relations tab here and you can just turn off connected. Now, if I go back to pose mode, I can translate this and it still maintains that parent relationship. So that's one benefit to keeping it connected is that you will control the elbow or a knee. Um, if this was a robotic rig, I might want to do that where I only want this to rotate here. And these could probably be an Euler to help with that too. Let's talk about one more thing about connected bones when it comes to bendy bones. So I have two rigs here. I have one called connected where if I click on this child bone here, it is connected. And I have this bone here where it's not connected. So bendy bones is a different option when you're dealing with rigs in Blender. Again, if you're coming from Maya, you might have done this with a spline IK. In Blender, you can do it really easily with something called bendy bones. I'm just going to flip the display to B bone. And I'll do the same with this rig here. And I should be able to do all these at the same time where I'm just going to increase the bendy bone segments to 10. I'm holding alt on my keyboard and I'm clicking on the segments option. And that allows me to change all of these at the same time. So let's talk about this a bit more. This is connected. 
and this one over here is disconnected. And you can already sort of see the difference. Now I'm going to flip to pose mode. This one still maintains its parent-child relationship, very similar to the other rig we just looked at. But look at the difference in the bendy bones with a connected bone. Now when I rotate this, I get really interesting toony shapes to this. This can be extremely useful if you're working on a sort of a tweak node on a forearm, um, something going up a spine. You can get really interesting deformations with this and really clean deformation. If you were working on a wire rig, you could do really interesting things with this. This is another reason why connected bones might be better in certain situations. So if I expand the relations option again here, I'm still connected. Let's look at one more example. And this is an actual deformation example. So this one I have selected right here, they are not connected. So I can rotate the leg and I can actually translate it. So you could actually do some interesting things with that knee if you needed to do a smear frame or you wanted to give the animator an option to sort of extend the leg for some reason, say it was a really toony show, you might want to do something like this where you extend the knee. This might be rare though. Even on a smear frame, they might be able to get away with it by scaling the leg, uh, even if they just scale it on the Y axis. This leg here has a connected bone system. So the benefit here is that when I rotate this leg, I can get much more of a toony style um, arc on that foot. So even like this, with that bendy bone enable, I'm getting that really nice arc on that leg where this side, it's very rigid. Now, you might want either one of these styles. Neither one is necessarily right or wrong. It's just something that you can think about while you're rigging uh, to tailor the rig to the style of the show. And even if you can, maybe the rig could support both styles. So maybe you could have a dial on the rig that lets the animator choose what style of show they want to do um, or what style you've even seen they want to do. Most shows, though, tend to stick to one style throughout. They have a, a similar animation style narrative throughout the piece. It's rare that you'll have more than one style in a show. Um, it does happen. And it does not have to be in one rig. You could even think of having two rigs for your character, one with a very rigid system and one with more of a toony, spliny system. That way you're making lighter rigs for specific shots. So a shot and style based rig compared to a really heavy rig that does everything. Anyway, that's just a glimpse into the differences between connected and disconnected bones. I hope that cleared up some things for when you might use them or how they work. And I'm gonna be doing some more tutorials in the future where I examine how we can use connected bones, but still have the ability to disconnect the joints. And we'll talk more about that in future videos. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time. Bye-bye. <music>